She's fucking unburying bodies in the back, trying to get them out. Hey everybody, welcome to Crime Over Cocktails. I'm Tiffany, your host. And tonight I'm going to talk about the case of Carmen Montenegro and Samuel Wiggins. Carmen was a mother of two, Daniel and Chanel, living in San Bernardino, California. She was an empty nester, so she decided it's probably a good idea to downsize. She met 60-year-old veteran Samuel Wiggins when he had a room for rent. She went and looked at it, but he told her that he didn't have air conditioning, so she didn't take the room, but she did take a friendship. California, no air? I couldn't take that either. There was more than a 10-year difference between Carmen and Sam, but people who knew them said that it didn't really seem to make a difference. They liked the same things. They had a lot of the same interests. They became a couple rather quickly. Even though Samuel was 60 years old, he had never been married. He never even had a long-time girlfriend. This was like the first girl he fell in love with. He just wanted to shower her with love to let her know that she was special to him. And he was very generous. He even paid for Chanel's college tuition and for a car. But even though with all this generosity that he had shown her, Almost immediately into their relationship, he started noticing things were going missing around the house. It was always little things, but they were things to him. And he didn't understand where they were going. How are all my things coming up missing? Any time that he would ask her, she would get defensive. So he always just tried to overlook it. And even just a few months in, he proposed. He really loved her. And she said yes. But it would become very obvious that she wasn't saying yes to his ring. She was saying yes to his wallet. About two years into it, Sam kind of hit a wall because he was tired of her stealing. Like, I give you everything. Why are you stealing from me? They were getting ready to move into one home. But he decided that he needed to cut it off. He was done. My generosity will only go so far. She decided that he was not going to leave her. How dare you not let me steal things from you? She grabs a knife and stabs him in the chest two times. Between both of those stab wounds, that was the cause of death. But Carmen wasn't finished yet. Once he fell to the floor, she stabbed him 22 times in his back. She then went and got a chainsaw and cut off his head, his arms, and his legs. Carmen really did her best to hide what she did. She drove his car around town so people would see it and think it was him inside. She drained his bank accounts. But she even paid his mortgage to make it seem like he was still alive. Everything was fine. She was keeping up with the bills. I've read multiple things. Per the military justice for all, Samuel was last seen by his relatives on May 1st of 2011. Per the Huff Post, they said that family called the cops on May 1st, 11 to report him missing. Not really sure which one is accurate, but his cousin came to his home so he could check on him. Didn't appear that Sam was home, but he noticed that his favorite shoes were his cigarettes and his lighter was, they were sitting out back. He didn't leave the house without those. So when he ventures in, he's looking for him. Where is my uncle? When he got into the hallway, he could see blood spatter on some of the walls and the doorways. And that's when he called police to tell them the grisly discovery. His family obviously knows Carmen. So they're messaging her. What's going on? And this whole time, She's saying he's out of town, he's at the store. She tried to cover for as long as she could. But when she found out police were called, she got scared. She decided that she had to move the body. She buried him. So she's outside and she's digging him up. She doesn't want them to find him. While she's in the process of digging up these bags, she had a trash can right there with her. So she was digging them out. 
and then putting the bags in the trash. Well, her family shows up unexpected. And at first, she's like, oh my God, will you help me with these trash bags? I will give you $5,000 each. Just help me get these bags into the trash. Well, at first, like, fuck yeah, $5,000 to help you with some bags? All right. Well, just as they start to help, one of the bags fell to the ground. And that's when a foot was exposed. Clearly, he doesn't want any part of this. He turns around and walks away. All right, now. (laughs) This woman, she is so desperate. She goes running after him down the street with the trash can. (laughs) Right on the road. Just, she's going. (laughs) I have to paint this picture for you. She is walking down the street with a garbage can of body parts, screaming at him to help her. Matthew Bell called 911 instead, and he told them, she's fucking unburying bodies in the back, trying to get them out. Multiple neighbors spoke with police, stating that they too saw her walking down the street, pulling bodies. (laughs) who does that according to the 18 year old man the smell was so overwhelming that it made him sick that's until investigators show up to the scene and they're following her at one point she just puts it down in front of somebody's driveway and then walks off like the police didn't just see you with that garbage can And, like, every neighbor on the block. (laughs) In your family. And she told them, it's nothing. It's nothing. And they're like, what is in the garbage can? And she's like, it's garbage. When they looked inside the trash can, that's when they found Sam's torso and legs. Investigators found signs of a struggle at Samuel's Diamond Bar home. The carpet appeared to have been replaced. And when they pulled it up, Blood was found under that new carpet. They sent it off to be analyzed, but they already knew. That was Sam. The things that weren't inside of the trash can was his head and his arms. That made it harder for them to be able to identify him. There's no fingerprints. There's no dental records. But his family members contributed a DNA sample to help identify his body. Oh, wait until I tell you where they found the head and the arms. You are not going to believe this. On Mother's Day, Carmen and I guess her son and daughter were delivering plants to her cousin. It was two separate plants and different potters, and they were a Mother's Day gift for her. Turns out the head was in one of the planters. And both arms were in the other one. Not the kind of gift you want from your cousin? Per Murderpedia, investigators now believe that Montenegro's true name is Montelongo. She listed her age as 44 on several occasions, although authorities initially said that she was 51 years old. Her son and daughter were charged, accused of helping their mother dispose of the body. It's because they helped with the planters. But that doesn't mean they know what was inside of them. Daniel was 25 and Chanel was 22. They charged both with accessory to murder, but eventually were released because there just wasn't enough evidence. Carmen was charged with murder and was held on a $1 million bail. She was found guilty of first-degree murder and was sentenced to 26 years to life in prison. I saw a news footage, I think it was like Channel 5. A neighbor stated that he had his door open because he wanted to let the breeze in, and that the stench of death was just following Carmen. And it actually got into this man's house. What kind of fucking shit is that? Absolutely insanity. 
they had tents up, all kinds of people tearing apart that yard, looking to see, was there more people there? Was he the only one? It's just a shame to think that somebody waited 60 years to find the love of their life. But that person was just evil. Just a tragic end to what should have been a great love story. When you think about it, there were signs. But he chose to overlook them. This is actually like one of my biggest pet peeves in crime. Is when a person who came from like... I don't I don't really know that much about her background, so I can't say she came from nothing. But when somebody is able to provide for you a life that you would not have been able to provide on your own, people are just very ungrateful and greedy. If you ever see these behaviors in a partner, you really need to rethink things. Because sometimes people are around for the wrong reasons. He truly, truly loved her. He waited his whole life for her. She saw him as an opportunity. Big difference there. Don't be somebody's opportunity. We have to stop ignoring signs of problematic behavior. Someone is constantly stealing from you. Red flag. (laughs) If you or someone you know is in need of help for any reason, please head to crimeovercocktails.com. I got a list of numbers there that can help everybody on any kind of spectrum. While there, you can listen to the episodes. There's a way to reach out to me on the website as well if you want to be on the show, if there's a story that you want to be part of, or is there a story that you want me to cover? You can check out my merch, or if you want to help support the show, you become a Patreon, or there's two other ways you can help support the show. I got a lot of good stuff coming up, you guys. If you want to be a stalker, check out my Instagram and my Facebook page, Crime Over Cocktails. If you're ever curious what all these people look like, every Thursday I post the episode and pictures. I know I can't be the only stalker. Come on, guys. You also find some dark humor. Gotta laugh, people. Gotta laugh. All right, you guys. We'll talk crime another time. I love you guys. Bye.